You're listening to Fun Oldies 100.9 FM and AM 1450. Welcome to the fastest hour in radio. All about cars. Brought to you by ABC Motors Prescott with your hosts, David Don't Call Me, Dave Spence, and Big Mike Hill. So, Mike, do you know about any of the cars that are going to be axed after 2014? Um, any of the models? No, just the Dodges that we discussed. The, the Dodge Caravan is gone yeah the um i think the dart is go is it the dart that's going away or becoming something else there they're doing dodge was doing their whole revamp of they want to go to a power dodge is going to be the powerful line they're going to all the sxts and srts and really they want to do performance vehicles with dodge uh, let me say something. Did you see the Challenger with the option of the 650 oh, horses? Yes, I, I just saw. I just saw that. That's a amazing. Lot of you get a red key and a black key too. Did you yeah, read that? Yeah, oh, I, that was pretty nifty. When we Did were they do kids, anything different. Yeah, they do different things. Nice. Let's hear what he says. When we were kids, my dad typically bought General Motors products and Oldsmobiles, and then started buying BMWs as he got older. But one side of my family bought. Chrysler products. And so my cousin came home with a, uh, a Superbird, a Daytona Charger. And I thought, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. What the heck are you doing with this? And he said, get in and shut up. So we went for a drive. And, you know, the, the initial road and track report on that car was uh, 220 miles an hour on a perfect day. And I remember just this smile not going away for about a week after being in that car. Well, even talking about it, I see that smile on your face <laughs> yeah. coming yeah. down. See, he, he, to, he likes that. You need yeah. to call your cousin and thank him yeah. for that because I that's, do. you I still do. got that memory going. I do, and he sold it at the height of the market a couple of years back, and uh, so, yeah, well, that was a great investment. And you It know, probably it, was. It probably did very well. When you talk to your cousin, you tell him he can go to our Facebook page. All It's facebook.com slash Radio. And he can actually click on one of the links there to go to this show on YouTube because I put all wow. of these shows on YouTube from our recordings. So if you ever want to listen to any of our previous shows, you can obviously go to our Facebook page. That's all right. great. Now, that Hemi version he's talking about, the reason you get two keys, yeah, you get the black key for the everyday stuff. Uh -huh. But then you put in the red key. And you really do have the 650 wow. horsepower so, engine. So they set up multi-tune yes with the key that's correct in that car so Crazy. in my home my wife would get the black key and i would have the red key <laughs> yes i'm sure you would do that <laughs> and then i need like a green key to give to the boy <laughs> you know, the multi-injection takes it down to a four-cylinder. Uh, yeah. like car that. turnover without you know, starting. That's the marketing idea. The four of us are now going to get rich. None of you listeners can steal our idea now. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Think no. copyrighted. You realize there's that cool car, but they're going to lose a couple interesting vehicles. They are. They're going to. They're going to lose the Avenger over there. Right. All right. We also know that over at Cadillac, they're going to lose. The wagon, the CTS wagon is going away. Now, you know, it's always gotten awesome reviews, and it's a cool-looking vehicle. It doesn't sell well enough, so they're going to get rid of that. But here's what I'm not surprised they're going to get rid of. We talk about what's the most embarrassing car. Have you ever seen a Nissan Murano Cabriolet? Mm. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I have to say, when I see them, it almost reminds me of some vintage stuff from the 40s and things because they sit very high and with the top down, they, they look neat, but I, I've never driven one. But with so. the top up, it is one of the ugliest <laughs> vehicles. And you're wondering what the hell is it actually good for because it's rated as a lousy SUV and it just... You're going to drive that down the street when you could drive something that actually looks good. I guess my question would be how many recalls are there on it? I don't know that there are a bunch of recalls out. I know that it was selling at the rate of about 800 a year. Oh, yeah, that's not. It's just a disaster. Mm. That's not what you would call popular. Well, no. there's one or two here in Prescott. Yeah, so. I've the, seen them. Yeah. Speaking of the recalls, <laughs> any word on your solstice recall? Yes, there's actually good news. I got called officially, okay. finally. So on Tuesday, this upcoming week, I finally get to take the car in and have it redone for the ignition. And I did ask. I said, so how long does it take? 
Well, we've gotten one done so far, and we're going to try to improve on the number of hours. So okay. it's pretty serious. Are they going to damage the dashboard while they're doing it? I hope not. I mean, it is your car, and I know your I luck. I know. And my, yeah, I know. So, That's probably my luck, but it, now, it better not because I've now, got my carbon fiber dash in there. Now, for those of you that don't understand what I mean by David's luck, David takes his car, and he takes immaculate care of it. I mean, David is a car guy's car guy. Takes immaculate care of it parks at the farthest possible spot in the parking lot where nobody can get anywhere near him mm. without trying to takes up two and a half spots just no, so no, no one can no, literally no, park that, no. no that would be being a jerk and he doesn't do the jerky <laughs> yeah, thing that would he, draw too much attention he parks he literally does though he parks all the way in the far off corner where there's a curb on three sides <laughs> and he's, he's right i really do do this I you do know i mean he My almost wife hates it he almost takes the wheel jacks and jacks the car up and slides it farther in than you can actually physically get to <laughs> but and it's not about oh i want the exercise from walking across the parking lot david and i have traveled around phoenix and other places we park like this and we come out and the biggest truck in, in the neighborhood has managed to find the parking space next to it is the only one suitable. No other cars in the lot. They park next to it. Now that He's guy... He's right. Now what's funny is, is when it's that guy, it's not a big deal. It makes David a little nervous. David says, really? He had to park right next to me. And I said, David, he didn't hit your car and he's protecting you. And David yeah. says, okay, that works. Yeah. Because if David doesn't have that guy park next to him, somebody will back into his car. Somebody will trip and fall three and a half blocks away, pushing a shopping cart that'll roll down the street, hit a moped, knock it into a go-kart that will then go and hit a dog who will run across the hood of David's car. Yeah, this, this, this type is of stuff, what happens. It really does happen. <laughs> you know, I'm parked in the service lane one day, literally parked in the service lane at the dealership right where I'm supposed to be. I go in, get to have the car serviced, and all of a sudden the service writer says to me, somebody just ran into your car. No. Oh. And it, what happens is I go out there and somebody backed right into the side of the car. Oh, oh man. That oh, no, happened. It gets better because he got that fixed. Yes. And they did a beautiful job. Yes. And David went on a lovely vacation. Yes, I did. I went on a lovely some, vacation. Where somebody promptly backed into the other side. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Oh, 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 oh. Time I, to sell it. Yeah, I parked I parked at, the, at a hotel just like I'm supposed to be oh. under the Port Cochere where you're supposed to have the car. The car's backed into again. And so that <laughs> happened. It's true, <laughs> and I love the, the little side. car. I hate to, I hate to laugh, there, but it's, but yet, he laughs. Uh, he, he knows how uh, bad I get. But I it's get the furious. David luck. It's the David luck. Yes, I know. Mm. I his, thought I have insurance. His his lovely wife has a beautiful turbo solstice that I like better than David's. It is better, and they could park that in the middle of the handicap spots. And give away free electric carts, and nobody would come anywhere near it and touch it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. never happened. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's never happened. Her, and her car's her car's the rare car. You he know? parks right. under a tree, and it bleeds sap to the other direction. <laughs> it you know it, it just doesn't want to damage her car. No, no, the, which is good. The only thing her car ever has troubles with is speed bumps. That it has a problem That's with. That's because it's turbo and you're speeding. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an actual jump. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not? It's not a speed jump. It's a speed it's a bump. Yeah, it's a reminder, not a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a really fun car to drive because you're out there driving with a bunch of jerks like on the interstate. Who does somebody that does something really dumb? You ever have somebody just like dog you? Uh, they just dog you. All and the they time. do this on purpose. And oh, it's yeah. like... All right, I've had it. It's really nice to be able to step on the car, and this car that's been dogging you is left in the dust as you proceed to 100 miles per hour in about two seconds. Not nice. that we recommend driving like that. No. Except for Scott. We recommend yeah, Scott, Scott goes that fast, but I'm sorry. Sometimes uh -huh. it becomes necessary. <laughs> it does. It yeah. does. But I was I was being dogged when I was driving on a trip just recently, and it was driving me nuts. Mm. You just couldn't stand it. Because it'll be right off the quarter panel of that car, and you cannot see out of that car on the quarter panel. Well, that's, you yeah. know, we've had that happen. I'm driving the diesel truck with the trailer behind it, and somebody wants to sit right on my rear quarter panel, not let me change lanes, not get out of my blind spot. And then they flip me off. When I romp on the <laughs> throttle, roll coal, and fill their car with black smoke, nice. <laughs> because because seven hundred foot pounds of torque moves when you uh. push on it. 
Yes, which is a, which is in fact the right answer because really what we're talking about is just a lack of being uh, courteous for some drivers to do that. And I don't know, are they do they really realize that they are this incredibly annoying? Because sent me in your blind spot really makes you right. uncomfortable. I'll, I'll tell you my honest answer to that, David, is I think that they are such poor drivers they don't realize that they actually have their own speedometer. And they don't have to sit right. in the exact same spot on your car thinking, well, if he's speeding and I'm speeding, he'll get the ticket because he's in front of me. I you think know. you're and right that's, that that's, that's what they think. That's honestly how you're, it works. Yeah, you're the bird dog. Yeah, I, had yeah. a, I had the 75 Datsun pickup, my first pickup ever, bad valves. Somebody get on my rear end, I'd pop it into neutral, wrap it up a couple times, and black smoke would come out of that truck. Speaking I mean, of, we're talking about three quarts every two days I would have to put back into this vehicle, truck. Speaking of your vehicle, Scott. Remember last week you asked a uh, 78 Toyota has run on when you shut it down. Yes. I got bad news for you, buddy. Oh, no. I talked to Bill Benson again out at Twin Lakes Auto Service, and I checked with a couple other guys. The 78 Toyota, a lot of those back then, they have a uh, non-dieseling or non-run-on solenoid in the carburetor. Okay. Unfortunately, you cannot get those. I was going to swap it out with Weber. The, they that make a, they, Now, the good news is they do make a Weber kit for your truck. It's about 269 bucks. Gets rid of a bunch of the emission stuff. It'll probably improve your mileage and your performance. Right and it'll stop the up -cha, up -cha, up -cha, at and the end of your drive. Well, well easy, I know where there's yeah. one down in uh, Wilhoyd at my brother-in-law's house on his truck. I think I might just trade him. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> you know. I, I wonder how he goes about that. On, <laughs> on behalf of your brother, I think that's a great idea. Uh, thank you. The Scott, good luck tonight in your races. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for coming out. We're gonna follow you uh, over there to the bagel shop. I think I want to get another vanilla latte and a nice Asiago cheese bagel. Maybe I'll get something different. Never been a big fan of the everything bagel. Oh, it's amazing. That's what people tell me. Amazing. Maybe Our biggest seller. One. Our biggest seller. You wow. know, we've killed another one, Mike. It's amazing how fast this went. Well, someday, David, we'll have two hours. We're going to have yeah. to move it up to two hours. We're going to have to convince them. You feel like taking the terraplane over to the bagel shop? Old World Bagels, what's the address? 404 West Goodwin. And they open at 7. Yeah, just a couple minutes from now. Yeah. Well, you've been listening to All About Cars, brought to you by ABC Motors Prescott, with our guest, Eric, from Old World Bagels, here on 100.9 FM, 1450 AM. We'll see you next week. I can't get it all. I pull it in a little double-fudging spot. I hear the cats holler, man alive.